It seems like nowadays everybody and their cousin is trying to sell you their rub. Why buy it when you can make your own at home? Unless I get a rub one day and you can buy mine. But today I'm gonna show you how to make one out of the spices in your cabinet. Today we are making a homemade barbecue seasoning. When you go to your local grocery store and you walk down the seasoning aisle, there's gonna be dozens and dozens of different barbecue rubs that you could buy. And to be honest, a lot of them are really great. But the truth is, you can make one just as good, if not better, at home with everything that you have in your cabinets. So today, we're gonna be taking those staple spices that are already in your cabinet or making an amazing barbecue rub. It's gonna be a lot easier and even cheaper than you probably think. Are you ready? Let's get to spicing. So in today's video, we are indeed gonna be making a homemade barbecue rub. This is just gonna be a basic barbecue rub. It's not gonna be a sweet one or a hot one or anything like that. So without further ado, let's just introduce our spices. So here we have salt, brown sugar, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, cumin, black pepper, and cayenne. So now that I've shown you the spices and seasonings that I'm gonna be using to make a rub, I kinda wanna break down each individual spice and tell you why I'm including them in this rub and what measurements I'm using and why. I had somebody recently in the comment section ask me, you know, why do you use this barbecue rub and why do you use it on this piece of meat? And just kinda wanted me to go a little bit of a deeper dive, so to speak, on why I do what I do. So I thought this would be the perfect video to film and maybe could save you a dollar or two in your kitchen if you don't have barbecue rub on hand. So I'm hoping this helps you guys a lot. So in a traditional barbecue seasoning, I can pretty much guarantee you that all of these will be included in there in some measurement in some way, shape, or form. What makes each rub really unique is the variations in how much they use of each of these spices. The way that I like to make my spices is to make things very unison and even, and I'll explain that here in a second. So I have equal parts of my salt, my brown sugar, and my paprika. Salt in barbecue is a must just because salt on meat helps to draw moisture out of the meat. It acts as like a cure or like a dry brine. And meat has to have salt, it helps enhance the flavors. Then we have our brown sugar and that is what's gonna add that sweet element that all barbecue rubs have. You could use brown sugar or normal sugar or whatever you want. Then we have our paprika and the paprika really is just for the color. It doesn't add a whole lot of flavor you will notice a flavor difference if you use way too much paprika. I like to have equal parts of an assault, brown sugar, and paprika. And for today's recipe, I'm doing four tablespoons for all three of those. And so then we're gonna move down one tier to two tablespoons. So I have equal parts, that's two tablespoons, of my garlic powder, my onion powder, my chili powder, and my cumin. The garlic powder and the onion powder add in that perfect balance of the garlic and onion taste. It has some of those like little savory notes, things that really just enhance the flavor of your barbecue rub when it's mixed in with your chili powder and and your cumin. Chili powder and cumin add in that smoky type of a flavor. And if you use too much of the chili powder and too much of the cumin, it could start to get a little bit of that like Latin Hispanic mix in there, like you're making like a taco seasoning. So that's why I like to have equal parts of that garlic and onion, just to kind of balance it all in there. And then you have more sugar, more salt, more paprika to really add in that earthiness. And it all together, mix all together, it just blends very well and makes a good barbecue rub. And then moving down even one more tea here I have one tablespoon of black pepper. And then last but not least, I have two teaspoons, which is like half or a little less than half of a tablespoon. And that's just gonna add in some of that real heat. But when it's mixed in with that salt, with that brown sugar, it's really gonna mellow it out and balance it out. And that's really all we're looking for here today is just to have something super balanced. Now, if you wanted to take this to the next level, you could start to tweak and add things however you want. If you wanted a spicy, barbecue rub, you could add in more cayenne. If you wanted a sweet barbecue rub, you can make brown sugar be your highest tier, so to speak. So let's mix all of these up together. I'll show you what it looks like at that point. And then I'll talk about what kind of meats this is good for, what you shouldn't use it on. And then I'll tell you how you should store this, how long it's good for, and all that good stuff. So let's just get to mixing our seasonings. So we're gonna start off by adding in four tablespoons of salt, followed by four tablespoons of brown sugar, and followed by another four tablespoons of paprika. 
So now before I add anything else in, I just kind of want to get this stirred up just a little bit. When you have this brown sugar in here, you just kind of want to make sure that you're smashing it down and breaking it apart because brown sugar really likes to clump together. And if you have a whisk or something of that nature, that'll work really good here. My whisk is old and crappy and kind of broken, so I'm just going to be using a fork today. That's going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this up for about a good another 30, 40 seconds just to make sure that this is nice and beat down well incorporated. Then I'll come back and finish out the rest of my seasonings. Now I'm gonna be dumping in two tablespoons of garlic powder and two tablespoons of onion powder. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a quick little mix. Nothing super serious, nothing super crazy going on here. Just about a good 15, 20 second mix. I find that it's a lot easier to do it in increments rather than dump everything in, then try to mix it. I feel like you end up mixing for a really long time. So I'm gonna go ahead here, about another 10 seconds or so. I'll see you for the next seasonings. Next up we have two tablespoons of cumin and two tablespoons of chili powder, followed by our two teaspoons of cayenne and our one tablespoon of black pepper. Then we are just gonna mix this up all together. And now you guys kind of see why I wanted to be mixing this up as I went, because now we're just mixing in the last couple of our seasonings. It makes it a lot less complicated. I think that it's easier to get it more well incorporated this way. That way, when you're putting this on like ribs or chicken, you don't get one bite that is like exclusively spicy or one bite that's just full of garlic or one bite that's full of salt. It's really important to get this mixed very, very well and that nothing clumps together. That way when you apply it, you get the full balance and the full blend of what this barbecue rub is really supposed to be. And if you do that, if you can achieve that, the flavor on here is packed and it is amazing. So now let's get on to some other info. The way that I'm gonna store it is I'm gonna store it in a mason jar. And if when you store it in there, it's good for like four to six months. I'm not sure that it actually spoils to where you go sick. I mean, maybe it does. I have zero knowledge on this, so don't sue me. I'm not reliable or responsible for anything that goes wrong in your house. Just. Just putting that out there. I don't know, maybe it's just the flavor that starts to weaken over time. Like, pretty sure seasoning has a shelf life. Like, after a certain amount of time, it like decreases in flavor, maybe. I don't know. But this rub right here is good for, I would say, pork and chicken. And just to prove you guys that I know what I'm talking about, my next two videos, I'm gonna be doing ribs using this rub. And then the one after that, I'm gonna be using some type of chicken cut with this rub. And we'll just see how good and awesome and amazing it is. But for this video, I'm just strictly showing you guys how to make this, giving you some good facts and information about how this rub, how it's made, what's in it, what it's good for, all that good stuff that we've covered here today. So if you have liked this video, if you found it of any good information or knowledge, do you be sure to hit the like button. I don't know why every YouTuber says to do it. I just am kind of just following the blind path of every other YouTuber. It's good for the algorithm. It's gonna show other people how to make spices, they say. So just do it, just hit the like button and then subscribe to the channel because when you subscribe to the channel, you'll get to hang out with me every Tuesday and Thursday and you really wanna hang out with me every Tuesday and Thursday. And as always, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace. Mm, that's not bad, that's a barbecue rub. <laughs>